Hey guys, and welcome back to another Blender Tasty tutorial. Yes, today we are taking a look at the particle system again. So I'll show you how to create this animation from scratch. Uh, we won't be doing any texturing or rendering, but I'll be putting video cards throughout the video so you can check out how I usually do the texturing and rendering stuff. As always, there's going to be a free source file with this tutorial down in the description that you can go download and check it out for yourself. And yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I put out these videos every week and I always offer a free source file that you can download and check out for yourself. In any case, that's going to be it. Let's go to the video. Okay, so I'm going to open up Blender 2.92. You can see all of the shortcuts in the bottom left screen. So let's delete everything in the scene and start fresh. We're gonna set up our particle system first. So we'll need a particle emitter and a collision, right? We want to have a bunch of particles collect around a sphere. So let's first set up our particle system. So I'm gonna add a sphere, so mesh UV sphere. I can scale it up to be about three, so it's S, control and then holding control you drag your mouse and it's gonna move it in increments of one control a to reset the scale of the sphere so everything works properly and we go into our particle system settings over here we're gonna add a new particle system and now we start to set it up so the number is the number of particles frame start frame end is kind of important because you want to know where your animation is going to hang so how long your animation is going to be Lifetime of the particles means that when the particles start to appear, they're gonna last for 50. So in this case, I would say let's keep it at 250 and we're gonna set the end to 250 for now. You can also set these times to be much shorter, let's say to 100 frames, so you can check out or preview how your animation is doing. Let's press play and this is what it should look like. So the sphere is now emitting these little white balls. So we want to set up a couple of things before we move on to our instance and our collision object. So I want to start with the field weight. I don't want to have any gravity. So I'm just going to turn off the gravity right there. Right. So they are now emitting directly from the sphere. I'm going to go under velocity and just drop the normal to one. So they, they just start appearing on the whole thing. Now, what I want to do in this animation is to have all of these particles appear at once and hit the other ball instance, whatever, at once. I just go to my end in my emission settings and just press one and set that one up. And that means that all of the particles appear in, in the first frame. Right. So now we need to set up a collision, right? So I'm just going to add another UV sphere and let's say I'm going to pull this one over here. And this is going to be our object that's going to attract these particles. Press Control A to reset the scale of that. And then I'm going to add another UV sphere, which is going to be our particle instance, right? I can put it somewhere there. So let me rename those. So that one is going to be particle. This one is going to be collision. And this one is going to be the emitter. Okay, I have everything organized, we can start. We're gonna use the charge force that I haven't seen used a lot around, to be completely honest. And it's kind of a shame because it's a really useful force. Now, the way you apply the charge force or to make it work, you need to go under your physics properties and we are working on our collision object right now. Force field, type of force, and instead of force, you use the charge. You can leave the charge at one. That means that it has a attraction strength of one. Now, this is important because we need to set up the particles over here. You can see that nothing is happening. And yeah, that's correct because the other object that is attracted to that needs to have a negative charge. The way you set it up, you don't set it up on your instance object, but rather you set it up directly in the particle system. So I'm going to go back into my particle system and in my force field settings, I'm just going to open them up and you can see the self effect type one, type two. We're going to need the type one and we're going to choose the charge. And you can see that the particles start to move away because they have a charge of one. Now, if I want to make them attract each other, let me drop into minus 0 0.5. And there they are. But yeah, we have a problem. They are bouncing through our ball. 
So now it's time to set up the collision of our collision object. So I'm going to select my collision object, just going to go into its physics properties and set up the collision. And now you can see we have some collision. I want these particles to kind of stop on the whole surface area and start distributing themselves around that object. One way of doing that is to actually work with the damping and the friction. Let's pump it to 0, 09. And you can see how it stopped our particles when they collided. And this is what we actually want. We want that sort of collision. But there is still something missing. So first of all, we need to have these not move so uniformly. We want to have some collision between those particles. And we want to use our instance object right here. So now it's time to set up all of that. So, so we're going to set up the instance object and we're going to set up the physics. So let's select our particle system. So to set up our instance, we go under render, render as halo, you click on that, and you just go under object, and under instance object, you select the particle. And you can see it applied our particle over here. You can play with the scale, so you can see how they become bigger, how they start to envelop our smaller sphere right there. But we still don't have like the collision between themselves. Now, usually you would need to download the molecular add-on, but, but we do have a workaround for this situation, which is going to be in our physics tab right here. So in the particle system, the physics. Instead of Newtonian, choose the fluid ones. And now you can see that they start to behave like a fluid. They will start to basically repel each other after a while, but you need to play with the settings slightly. So there's a bunch of things you can try. The viscosity one is really interesting and I like to use it a lot because it makes this sort of fluid, sticky type of simulation and I just absolutely love it. Uh, so deflection, you can use the size deflect and this is also going to influence the, let's say, collision distance between the particle and the collision object. If you want to have less interaction or more interaction between the particles themselves, you can go under advanced and here you can start to mess around with stuff like repulsion factor, you can push it up and this is going to make the distance between the particles bigger. The interaction radius is also going to make like the interaction radius between the particles much bigger or much smaller, depending on what you want. We can leave it at, let's say, 0 0.937. Let's say this is like going to work. This should be fine. And like I said, I want to have this sort of distribution. Maybe we can leave it at one. I really like that first iteration. So I want to have that quirmy type of animation. We can then start messing around more with scale. We can make it smaller, bigger, whatever you like. So this is the, the basic concept of this. Now, you can also, let's say, increase the number of particles and see what that gives you, right? So you have a much bigger mass, much bigger envelopment. It creates some sort of interest. And you can see how they start to distribute themselves like very weirdly. And the last thing I want to say about this topic in fine tuning your particle system is to go under integration and play with the subframes. So this means it's trying to calculate, I think it's trying to calculate the steps in between frames. Subframes to simulate for improved stability and finer granularity simulations, which is kind of interesting. It makes the simulations a bit better. They are going to take a bit more to calculate and a bit more to, you know, put themselves out, but it's worth it in the end. Again, you can try then different things. You can try increasing the strength of the force, let's say like that. So you have this interesting effect. It speeds up the whole animation, but it starts to freak out. It, it's, it makes this cool influence on the whole thing. Now, for this to look basically deleted, or rather that there is no collision object, you can just turn it off like that. You have the eye here, which means hide it from the viewport. You can also just directly select the collision object, press H, and that's going to hide it. And you have this type of distribution, right? So it's forming a sphere, even though the sphere, the sphere isn't there.
So if you don't want to have this in a render, you just choose your collision object right there. You go under your object properties, this yellow square, and in the visibility, you turn it off in renders. And for rendering the sound, this is the last very important step. You need to bake your particle system. And you do that by going to cache in your particle system and then just bake it. So this is going to basically calculate everything and set it up. If you don't do this, every render that you do is going to have some sort of issue. It's not going to render it properly. Either some, you'll have some clipping, you'll have some weird behavior. Now, I just want to leave you with one last tip. One last thing you can do is actually go and set up a metaball. So I'm just going to set a shift a metaball, push it over here, and I'm going to instance that metaball, right? I'm going to go under my render and instead of the particle, I'm going to choose the M ball. Now you can see it's acting kind of weird. Also, when it starts with the animation, it's this garbly mess, but there's a way of fine tuning this. So you either go with the resolution viewport and you just drop it down as much as possible like that. And you can see that it's much more similar to a fluid, which is really interesting. And you can either make it much, much smaller or much bigger. In this case, I think I prefer the bigger one, but do not forget to reset that scale because that's also going to influence your resolution viewport and your render viewport. It's so interesting. I think it's a really interesting application of the charge force in conjunction with metaballs and just creating this beautiful mess of mesh. So yeah, uh, if you want to check out the texturing process, uh, this is the video you can check out for texturing. And if you want to check out the rendering process, you can check out this video for rendering. But yeah, in any case, this is going to be it. Uh, feel free to check out the other videos that I've put out through the cards so you can check out rendering, you can check out lighting, you can check out texturing, that sort of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the videos. I put out these videos every week. You always get a free source file with them. So yeah, that's going to be it. And I'll see you in the next one.